Six history facts from todayifoundout.com. Number one. The first president of the United States, George Washington, upon his deathbed, told his attendants, I am just going. Have me decently buried, and do not let my body be put up into the vault in less than three days after I am dead. Do you understand? He was terrified of being accidentally buried while he was still alive. Among other famous taphophobics was Frederick Chopin, who upon his deathbed said, The earth is suffocating. Swear to make them cut me open so that I won't be buried alive. Yet another taphophobe was Hans Christian Andersen, who would always lay a card on his dresser before he went to sleep, even while traveling, that said, I am not really dead. He also requested that his arteries be slashed before burial. If you are a taphophobe but don't want to be cremated, simply tell your loved ones to make sure to have your body embalmed. If you aren't dead before the embalming, you will be after. Number 2. In 1891, Ellen Martin was the first woman to be able to vote in Lombard, Illinois. She noticed that the Lombard Charter on who could vote didn't mention gender. This charter superseded Illinois law, and thus she was legally allowed to vote. She and 14 other women voted in the 1891 elections before the charter was promptly amended. Number 3. The book The Woman and the Car, a chatty little handbook for all women who motor or want to motor, presumably extremely chatty given the title, by Dorothy Levitt, written in 1906, recommended that women carry a hand mirror while driving, as it is convenient to be able to see behind you during traffic by holding up the hand mirror. This is the first known mention of rear view mirrors being used in automobiles. The mounted rear view mirror wasn't available in standard cars until eight years later, in 1914. As for the first person to use a mounted rearview mirror in an automobile, which he installed himself, this was race car driver Ray Haroon. On May 30, 1911, while racing in the Indianapolis 500, Ray was able to get a mechanic to ride with him during the race. This was the custom at the time, as it provided the driver with the ability to know what was happening behind him and to be made aware of any cars about to overtake him. Ray ingeniously installed a mirror on his car instead. Ray didn't get this idea from the chatty little handbook, but stated he thought of it after remembering seeing a mirror used for this same purpose on a horse-drawn vehicle in 1904. Number 4. The ancient Romans' favorite wiping item, including in public restrooms, was a sponge on a stick that would sit in salt water and be placed back in the salt water when done, waiting for the next person to use it. Ancient Greeks were a little more sanitary, using stones and pieces of clay. Number 5. Rum helped spur the American Revolution as well as the Australian Rum Rebellion. It is estimated that around three gallons of rum were consumed per person per year in the American colonies shortly before the American Revolution. Rum production was also colonial New England's largest industry. The passing of the Sugar Act in 1764, also known as the American Revenue Act, drastically disrupted the economy of many of the American colonies, particularly hitting the rum industry hard. Among other things, this act resulted in the colonies having to increase the price on their rum, which allowed the British West Indies to increase their market share of the sale of rum. This act, along with the Stamp Act, enraged some of the colonists and helped establish the No Taxation Without Representation that eventually became a rallying cry for the revolutionists. As for the Australian Rum Rebellion, this took place after the governor of New South Wales, William Bly, in 1806, decided to outlaw rum as a medium of economic exchange. This resulted in the New South Wales Corps turning on him and holding him under arrest. The Corps then ran the island for four years until Governor Lachlan Macquarie arrived. Number 6. Ben Franklin fought hard for the turkey to become the United States' official bird, but he obviously lost out to the supporters of the bald eagle. His case for the turkey being the national bird on the Great Seal is laid out in the following letter to his daughter Sarah Bash. For my own part, I wish the bald eagle had not been chosen the representative of our country. He is a bird of bad moral character. He does not get his living honestly. You may have seen him perched on some dead tree near the river, where, too lazy to fish for himself, he watches the labor of the fishing hawk, and when that diligent bird has at length taken a fish and is bearing it to his nest for the support of his mates and young ones, the eagle pursues him and takes it from him. With all this injustice, he is never in good case, but like those among men who live by sharping and robbing, he is generally poor and often very lousy. Besides, he is a rank coward. The little king bird, not bigger than a sparrow, attacks him boldly and drives him out of the district. He is therefore by no means a proper emblem for this brave and honest Cincinnati of America, who have driven all the king birds from our country. 
I am on this account not displeased that the figure is not known as an eagle, but looks more like a turkey. For the truth, the turkey is in comparison a much more respectable bird, and withal a true original native of America. He is besides, though a little vain and silly, a bird of courage, and would not hesitate to attack a grenadier of the British guards, who should presume to invade his farmyard with a red coat on. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.